Good evening, everyone. Let the February 2021 Brookhaven Borough Council meeting come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. 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 To the United States of America. To the Republic. Which is today. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Mayor Leslie, will you give us some memorials? Yes, good evening. The deceased residents for the month of January 2021. Lazarus Kerfidus. That's the end. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Wilbert, would you give us a roll call, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Heller. Present. Mrs. Fuchs. Present. Mrs. Heller. Present. Mayor Leslie. Present. Mr. Vasquez. Mr. Vasquez is, is absent. Absent. Mr. Gilroy. Present. Mr. Pappas. Present. Mr. Wickey. Present. Mr. Wills. Here. Mr. Catania. Present. Uh, is Mrs. Boyle on? Joan is on, yes. Okay, Mrs. Boyle's checked in. Mr. Wilbert, that's the end of the roll. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Ford does not appear to be present. Uh -huh. that's a shame. That puts us into the first round of public discussion. Is there anyone for public discussion? Please unmute yourself. <clears throat> Public discussion going once, going twice. No one for public discussion, it's closed. Really quickly, um, Mrs. Ford, I think is, they had Coburn's PTL meeting tonight. So I think that's why there was a conflict. Okay, thank you. Chief Montella, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. We have the uh, Brookhaven Fire Company's January 2021 fire report. We had mm -hmm. two fire incidents in the borough, 10 non-fire, 20, 29 calls for mutual aid, four drills for a total of 45 for the month. We had no firefighter injuries, no civilian injuries, no loss on structure or contents in the borough. Our manpower was 45 calls, average of 15 firefighters, 595 hours in service for the month, four training sessions, average of 26 firefighters, 182 personnel hours for the uh, month. We had responded to the following incidents in Brookhaven Borough. We had two building fires in the borough, 3436 Edgemont Avenue at the GNC store. We had a light fixture in the ceiling, 4901 Chester Creek Road at Mac Hydraulics. We had a accidental welders fire. We had an accident on Dutton Mill Road in Preston Avenue and also a gas leak in the rear of 5,075 Edgemont, which is the rear of the uh, shop right. Assisted Upland Fire Company on two building fires, 801 Upland Avenue and Crozier Hospital. Assisted Parkside Fire Company on two building fires, one at Parkside Terrace, the other at 240 Avon Road, and an accident at 352 in Roland Road in Parkside. Assisted Aston Township Fire Department on two building fires, one on Mildred and Seward Lane, the house fire, and the 3900 block of Mount Road. Assisted Garden City Fire Department on a building fire on 17 Chestnut Parkway. Our monthly training was forcible entry. We had a dual training uh, session with the Morton Rutledge Fire Company. They came down and did some training with us. Our COVID-19 reports were submitted to the council and mayor. We are experiencing a, just a steady transport of positive COVID patients. Um, uh, Brookhaven Fire Company personnel, the status with our COVID-19 vaccination shots. We had 62 members offered the shots from Crozier Hospital for the COVID-19 vaccine. 54 uh, members received the first round of shots and we had 12 people already started the second round of the uh, vaccine shots. Our storm totals for the snowstorm that just passed 
during that three day event, we ran 19 EMS calls and 11 fire calls. Our January EMS report for 2021, the ambulance answered 182 calls for service, transported 110 people to the hospital during the month. 124 of those calls were dispatched as ALS emergencies. 58 of them were dispatched as BLS emergencies. And uh, we, the total for the month was 184. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Chief Zebley, with the police report, please. Good evening, Council. Uh, for January 2021, um, Brookhaven Police were assigned 645 assignments to Dalcom. Uh, of those, and more noteworthy ones are a robbery, uh, which is under investigation, uh, one sexual assault still being investigated with the assistance of CID, county detectives, uh, one burglary, uh, there was an arrest made on that one, uh, three assault incidents with three persons arrested, uh, 15 theft incidents, four retail, of those four were retail thefts, Four were thefts from unlocked park vehicles at night, overnight, and two were actual thefts of uh, vehicles. Uh, two fraud reports, three criminal mischief, two harassment complaints, three terroristic threats, three narcotics, one DUI arrest, one public intoxication arrest, two disorderly persons, four mental health responses, 22 suspicious conditions or persons or autos were investigated. Brookhaven Police responded to 24 domestic disputes or disturbances and resolved them. Uh, responded to 18 alarms. We also responded to 16 hazardous conditions or fire company calls. We took 23 vehicle accident reports in January and we assisted other departments 31 times. In total, 20 adults were arrested, 11 citations were issued or filed and six warnings were issued. Total loss to victims amounts to approximately $23,219. And looks like the recovered amounts is $5,253. Uh, in January, there were no issues with officers and COVID. Uh, our officers did begin receiving vaccinations and a stringent COVID mitigation plan and order remains in effect and will so uh, indefinitely, despite the vaccinations. Uh, one personnel issue was addressed in January. Uh, also, we had a new officer get sworn in in January, uh, part-time officer James Kelso. Uh, he is in the FTO, FTO program. And also, we have uh, upgraded portable radios from the county are ordered, and uh, we're oh, just simply waiting delivery. Uh, these radios are no cost to us as a department. It was... Uh, um, the, it was a um, funding was found by the uh, county to replace and upgrade all radios for every every police department in the county. So. Uh, for training, Officer Wetton attended 80 hours of training with SWAT, uh, 48 hours for uh, drone training and pilot license, uh, 24 hours for uh, related to explosives breaching, and eight hours of team training. Also, Officer Tuttle and August each attended eight hours of patrol tactic, tactics training. Officer Duff, Tuttle, Subers, Kelso, Martin, and myself received first aid and CPR training and recertification in January. Um, sensitive, sensitivity training is being sought for officers and de-escalation training is being pushed back because of COVID and we're still waiting for that to get going. Um, in total, um, approximately 100, 108 main hours of training were received by the officers. Uh, and we have the beanbag shells for the shotguns as we spoke before. Um, the range does not open until February, so we're looking to get our guys trained in that. Uh, lastly, uh, Brookhaven Police will be, Brookhaven Police will be uh, in doing the uh, trading card program. Uh, we're beginning the process of scheduling photographs and submitting 
bi biographies for production. Uh, with this, we will um, look to um, do prizes for um, ju uh, juveniles um, if they collect all the all, uh, cards of every officer. So we're working on that. It's in the works. So. And that concludes my report. I have a George Pappas autograph, 1993 version, if anyone wants one. <laughs> hey, what, what, just one question. What does the drone uh, certification or training entail? Uh, well, it'll, they had uh, an incident where they were really uneasy, where they may have had a barricaded subject up in the attic, and someone had to volunteer and pop their head up there. Oh, I this, Yeah, this will allow for the SWAT team members to um, yeah, yeah. fly a drone inside and take it to uh, awkward places where they can um, keep the officers safe. So we're not asking for a drone, it's for SWAT, got it. Uh, not yet, I'll ask for a drone later, so for I carry get, checks I, and stuff. I got, I got it all when I can say. Thank you, sir. Right. Mr. Wills. Yes, thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A copy of the solicitor's report was forwarded to the mayor and Burr council on Monday and a copy is on file with the Burr in case any members of the public wish to review it. A couple of highlights of that report are as follows. Uh, concerning the uh, Zor Street subdivision by the Arbor developers, the developer has recently submitted to the borough an executed uh, copy of the recorded and approved plan and so I have begun the initial draft of the developers agreement and public improvement security agreement and hope to get that to the developer within the next week or so. Secondly, on my list concerns 4830 and 4832 Greenwood Street. Again, this is basically a lot line relocation plan and a subdivision application it was filed with the Burr in, either, in order for the lots to conform with zoning. Uh, this application is currently scheduled uh, for review by the Borough Planning Commission at its meeting on February 16th. Uh, I will be in attendance and I suspect uh, uh, a member of Mr. Catania's office will also be present for that uh, uh, Borough Planning Commission review. Thirdly, concerns the tax assessment appeals for 2021. Uh, we are technically uh, monitoring a total of 10 property tax assessment appeal cases filed with the borough for 2021. The deadline to file had been January 31st. I have not received any additional tax assessment appeal cases uh, since the workshop meeting. So I think we will be working with those uh, 10 cases for 2021. Uh, Finally, with regard to uh, the 2021 increase in the bid limits, uh, which are the requirements for the purchase of certain uh, borough products, uh, equipment and services, the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry has announced the annually adjusted bid limits for boroughs based on the change in the consumer price index. Beginning January 1st, 2021, the minimum purchase amount that requires advertisement for sealed bids will increase from $21,000 to $21,300. In addition, the minimum purchase amount required for telephone quotes will increase from $11,300 to $11,500. And of course, borough purchases of less than $11,500 require neither advertisement for sealed bids nor telephone quotes. I also have several action items uh, for borough council's consideration this evening, and they are in the form of three different resolutions. First resolution is one recognizing and awarding police officer Benjamin Kyler a permanent service connected disability and an honorable discharge from police service. I will briefly review and read this resolution for uh, the councils uh, and uh, also the uh, uh, public's uh, uh, review and attention. 
And it reads as follows. Whereas Officer Benjamin Kyler has been employed as a full-time police officer by Brookhaven Burr since February 6th of 2012. And whereas on or about June 6, 2019, Officer Benjamin Kyler was injured while performing police duties. And whereas various medical documents and reports indicate that Officer Benjamin Kyler can no longer perform the duties of a police officer. And whereas Brookhaven Burr believes that such injuries have resulted in Officer Benjamin Kyler's total permanent service related disability. And whereas Brookhaven Burr desires to grant Benjamin Kyler an honorable discharge and to permanently fix Officer Kyler's status as a recipient of a total permanent service connected disability pension. And whereas Brookhaven Burr has entered into agreement between the Burr and Delaware County Lodge number 27, the Fraternal Order of Police, recognizing Benjamin Kyler's permanent service connected disability, wherein the appropriate pension and certain medical benefits, life insurance and other retirement benefits will be established. Now, therefore, effective February 28th of 2021, Benjamin Kyler shall receive an honorable discharge and again, a permanent service connected disability pension with appropriate medical benefits, life insurance, other retirement benefits. Uh, if it is the pleasure of Bar Council to adopt such a resolution, a motion would be in order at this time. I'll entertain a motion, who wants it? I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. With one absent. And I think the record, obviously, we have an abundance of medical records and documents on Officer Kyler indicating that uh, his, in fact, uh, injuries are permanent. And again, he has not been working as a full-time police officer now in excess of one year. He's been out obviously on uh, medical leave as a result of these serious injuries. So I think uh, uh, that resolution is clearly in order. Second resolution for Burr Council's consideration is the authorization of a partial escrow release for the completion of certain public improvements by Franklin Brookhaven LLC for the residents at Brookhaven Glen. Again, this is the 55 uh, and over community that has just recently uh, commenced construction. And the resolution reads as follows, whereas the Borough of Brookhaven and Franklin Brookhaven LLC entered into a development agreement which provides effective security for the completion of public improvements associated with the development project whereas Franklin Brookhaven LLC has established an irrevocable letter of credit with WSFSS Bank in the amount of $1,878,122.41 as completion, or strike that, as security for the completion of the public improvements. And by correspondence dated January 20th, 2021, Franklin Brookhaven has requested a partial escrow release for the completion of certain public improvements. And whereas the borough engineer has reviewed the request for escrow release, and recommends an escrow release in the amount of $136,704.88. And so again, if it is the pleasure of Borough Council to adopt such a resolution, a motion would be in order at this time. What's the motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any questions? Motion carries. Thank you. My third and final resolution for Bar Council's consideration uh, this evening is the authorization of an application to the Delaware County Council 
for liquid fuel tax funds in the amount of $8,910 to be used toward the Burr's 2021 road resurfacing program. As counsel and the public may know, uh, liquid fuel taxes are basically gasoline taxes imposed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on each gallon of gas that consumers pay at the pump. These gasoline taxes are then distributed uh, by the Commonwealth to all the 67 counties, which in turn then distribute those to the various municipalities within their jurisdiction. There's basically a formula that counties utilize to distribute hey, municipalities based on uh, the number of roadways in that particular uh, municipality. Yeah, but they're not corrected. I'm not gonna get them corrected. Uh, if it is the pleasure of Borough Council to adopt such a resolution, again, basically uh, authorizing uh, <clears throat> application to Delaware County Council for liquid fuel funds in the amount of $8,910. If it is the pleasure of Borough Council to adopt such a resolution, a motion would be in order at this time. Who's so taking motion? Second. Janice, second, anyone? Yeah. I'll second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any questions? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I just have a couple uh, uh, things. Well, hold, excuse me one second. Sorry. Jay, are we going to, uh, do we have to approve um, the lease for uh, the um, State rep. State rep. Uh, we can do that as well. Yes. Uh, as uh, council is aware, we have had an ongoing existing uh, lease with uh, state representative uh, Leanne Kruger. And prior to uh, Representative Kruger's election to the district, we've had previous uh, uh, municipal leases with the state representative uh, there that provides obviously. Okay related services okay. to our borough residents. So it's clearly a win-win both for the borough residents and the borough and also for Representative uh, Kruger to have immediate uh, and ongoing access to the borough and the borough residents. So I have prepared uh, uh, basically a lease amendment uh, that extends the lease for an additional two-year period, which would cover the years 2021 and 2022. And so if it is the pleasure of Borough Council to execute and authorize that lease extension, mm -hmm. a motion okay. would be in order at this time to do so. I thought we already voted on this in the, for the uh, January meeting. We did not? Yeah. No, it was, I looked it, in the minutes. Was it brought up? It must have, it must have been brought up for consideration. It, Who it, wants it, the motion? Yeah, in the Who, January meeting. January meeting, it was brought up for consideration. I just happened to uh, see it today. I apologize, it wasn't on the uh, agenda. Don't let it happen again. Do, I, do we have a motion? <laughs> so moved. Do we have a second? A second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No questions? Denise, I apologize for interrupting. Motion, motion, motion carries. I, I believe that now concludes my report, Mr. Madam President. Mayor. I am sorry for the interrupt, rude interruption by Office Manager Wilworth. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> let me try this again. Good evening, sorry. everybody. I'm Good sorry. Evening. Good evening. <laughs> John, don't let it happen again, as Terry okay. said. <laughs> just kidding. So, good evening, everyone. Um, I just have a couple things to uh, report. Public Works did an excellent job uh, plowing our streets with all the snow that we got. Um, I do want to wish uh, Officer Ben Kyler the best of luck. And the third thing is um, we conducted some interviews for part-time police officers, which we're still in the process of. Hopefully get some more part-timers in. And that's all I have for my report. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I got a few things for you here, folks. Um, first, I have Mr. Vasquez's report. If I can get my phone up, and Mrs. Vasquez is expecting, so 
Hector's uh, excuse for that, obviously. Sorry, I gotta open my phone. I can't find my text now. All right, we have for Hector, zoning has nothing new to report. And he would like to report that the sewer jet training for the new sewer machine took place on Tuesday, February 2nd. So everyone in Public Works was trained and they are now able to use that machine safely. Mr. Vasquez also asked for a motion to approve the purchase order for the cab and chassis for the utility truck, the bucket truck, in the amount of $52,168.47. That was ordered last year and approved last year, but was held up by COVID. It is a Ford and uh, the Ford factory where our parts were being produced or the vehicles being produced was held for um, to manufacture ventilators for COVID-19. So I need that motion to approve the purchase order for the purchase of the cabin chassis for the utility bucket truck. So in the amount of $52,168.47. Ms. Sawyer, you're taking the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. Also, we have a personnel vote. We have um, David Evans, who has been in the role of acting public works supervisor since January of 2020. He filled that role in a temporary, uh, on a temporary basis when Gary Thompson retired. Council met to decide to vote tonight on making Mr. Evans the permanent public works supervisor. Mr. Evans brings 26 years of experience in Brookhaven Public Works Department. Council's fully satisfied with the job he does. They're fully satisfied with the department's job, the, 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 all the folks that work under Mr. Evans. And uh, with that, I would make a, I'm asking for a motion to promote Dave Evans permanently to the role of Public Works Supervisor with the salary to meet the demands of the collective bargaining agreement. I have a question. Go ahead. What is the date that this is effective? Because we need that for the minutes. That should be effective. I, I don't see why you would push it down the road. Mr. Wills, you see any reason why we wouldn't make it effective tomorrow, February 4th? Yeah, it made effective immediately. That is correct. Okay. Then we'll, okay, thank you. We'll call it immediately February 3rd of 2021. Okay, so that's you. the motion. Who wants it? So I, I made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And Mr. Vasquez wanted me to pass along um, his thoughts, saying that if he were present, he would he would favor the role. So it's generally a unanimous vote. Congratulations, Mr. Evans. I want to thank uh, Public Works for the great job they did with plowing, um, the fire department for their role. Mm -hmm. and the police department and everyone else involved. Then Harry for his role helping out up here at- yeah, Good job. Also want to remind everyone that the fourth and final round of banners application period is open until March the 5th. So you have another month to get your banner apps in. Oh, banner, I thought you said banners. <laughs> no, okay. so Ricky banners. Okay, I didn't- I also have to announce an executive session directly following tonight's okay. meeting. The subject is a matter of discussing a certain procedure and an additional item that is related to personnel. Board of Health wise, I'd like to, I'm happy to report that a property maintenance issue that we had on Greenwood, received a lot of complaints about, has self-resolved and the uh, resident was compliant with our request. So that's good. And uh, let's see. I think that's all I have. Oh, well, we have some good COVID news, at least for Delaware County. I've been checking the cases every day. We had a recent low today of 111 COVID cases. For anyone that follows it, we've been as high as 450 in Delaware County since about early November. So for whatever reason, you're seeing about a 60 to 75% drop in Delaware County, mostly within the last few weeks. Nationally, you're seeing about a 33 to 40% drop, depending on what site you look at. Um, no one has any idea why. Only 6% of the nation's been vaccinated, so that has some part of it. Um, but Brookhaven has slowed, but not 
at the same rate that the county slid. We're still looking at 85 cases within the last 30 days for a total of 468 COVID cases. We did add one death, unfortunately, last month. So we're up to uh, 10 COVID-19 related deaths in the borough since the beginning of the pandemic. And I think that is all I have. Oh, I need two motions. One motion to approve the January 4th, 2021 council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion to approve the January 25th, 2021 council workshop meeting minutes. I'll take the motion. We have a second? Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all I have. Thank you, folks. We have Mrs. Fuchs. Thank you, Mr. President. The Ordinance Committee will meet on Thursday, February 18th, and I would like to take a moment to thank both Stephanie Donaway and Sean McKenna for devoting their time and valuable input to the committee. Due to their impeding work schedules, they both felt the need to resign at this time. In light of that, I would like to make a motion to accept Stephanie Donaway's resignation from the Ordinance Committee. We need a vote on that. I, have to, um, I need. We do, a, we do. We do. We're waiting on the motion. Anyone? I'll make a motion. Oh. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I also would like to make a motion to accept Sean McKenna's resignation from the Ordinance Committee. I'll make the motion. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No questions, I would imagine. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, so I, I would again like to thank Stephanie and Sean for caring enough to be on the Ordinance Committee, a committee that's designed to help the borough and its residents. Um, let's see, technology website news. Mr. Wilward and I had a call with Michael Peter, our account representative for General Code, or as we all know, ECODE, to discuss codification costs for next year's budget, along with ordinance updates. Mr. Wilbert is working on getting Mr. Peter some zoning information needed. Mr. Wilbert, would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, the zoning ordinance that we have now was changed in 2018 mm -hmm. and the uh, old zoning ordinance is still out there. And what we're gonna do is uh, make an indication on E-code that the, the, the present zoning is incorrect. And there's mm -hmm. a tab on the, uh, Web, web page that says new laws and the <clears throat> excuse me the message would say in the old zoning um on the old, old zoning code that the see the new laws see the tab new laws for the 2018 code so basically and then once all the codification is done the two the zoning code will be where it's supposed to be the new one good thank so, you mr Robert. Mm -hmm. thank you um, website modifications are in the works for this new ordinance section and will be finished by our workshop meeting this month. I'll also work with the police uh, and Chief Sebley on updating their section on the website. Um, community news. So there were quite a few questions regarding trash pickup this week. And I just wanted to remind everyone that our schedule will remain intact unless you hear from us via website, social media, or digital sign. If you don't see anything posted, regarding a change in trash pickup, please assume that it's business as usual. I had many, many people ask me if we were gonna have our trash picked up today. So if you don't hear otherwise, it's gonna be on Wednesday. And that's all my report. Thank you. Hey, Mr. 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 Gilroy. Uh, first of all, I wanna congratulate Officer Kelso. From what I hear, he's very sharp and uh, should make us proud. I wish him the best and uh, safe career uh, with Brookhaven Police. Um, on the flip side of that, I do want to uh, give best wishes there well off to uh, Officer Benjamin Kyler. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, discuss, uh, we, the police community did have uh, interviews yesterday. Uh, we had some really good candidates, some really strong candidates, really, uh, really should help us out, uh, get them up and running. And they're currently uh, have some solid experience, really hit the ground running, we're hoping. Um, and, and of course, uh, the public works with, uh, with snow removal. Um, I can't say enough. I, 
I, I've never seen so many people get so many compliments. I mean, they did a phenomenal job through the whole town. I, I mean, there wasn't a, a single time you couldn't drive in any road. It, big roads, small roads, it didn't matter. They did a phenomenal job. Uh, and with that, I will send it back to you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Mr. Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the workplace safety meeting was held in January. Uh, good uh, for and all departments attended. Uh, there really were no safety issues. Uh, probably the only thing that's of importance was uh, Harry is still sanitizing the borough hall. Uh, all aspects for the safety of the employees since it is closed uh, from the public. Uh, and there were no employee injuries uh, for that month. Uh, my second part is, is that the planning commission uh, has a vacancy uh, and we're actually looking for someone to take a position there. Uh, the the um, individual, the applicant should be able to read the developer planning drawings. They should be able to read and interpret any type of borough construction codes and also the uniform uh, code. Uh, any knowledge uh, of construction would be a positive. Uh, knowledge of the planning process as it goes through the borough would be another plus. Uh, any interest in improving the, the overall appearance of the borough of Brookhaven would also be a plus. And you don't have to be a civil engineer or have an architectural design uh, degree. Uh, so anybody's interested, uh, you know, please contact the borough call. And my third piece is, is that uh, Mr. Heller, if you plan on getting into that uh, card before it goes on to eBay, let me have a first crack at it. Okay, 1993 was a long time ago. I think I have a few. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Heller. Okay, I have a few things. Um, as uh, Donna stated, the technology um, committee did meet this month. We are again meeting um, on February the 11th. Um, we have a fire committee meeting coming up next Thursday on February the 11th at 6.30. Uh, for the rec board, there's a few things going on with the rec board. So the first thing I wanna do is to let everyone know that we have some resignations. So Sherry and Rob Watchers um, have officially resigned. So we thank them for their time that they've spent on the rec board. They are gonna stay on board for a bit until the rec board is fully staffed. Um, we also have um, Mike Garvey, who is the vice president on the board. He also has resigned, but is going to stay on board until um, the board is fully staffed. Um, with that said, uh, we have four new members that I would like to make a motion for um, council. So the first motion is for a rec board member and that's gonna be for Jason Coleman. Um, Jason Coleman has a lot of experience um, in our community. He does a lot of uh, coaching for a lot of different sports. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to add Jason Coleman to the rec board as a member. Uh, can we tell what the term, you need the terms, what years he's being applied for? Because The report, report terms. term is uh, five years, is it not, Mr. Dykes? I don't know uh, which one he's taking. They're, they're four-year terms. Oh, they're four-year terms. Yeah. Um, we're trying to re put them all back in to where they belong. Uh, we're getting the, we'll be getting the note to, to, ja to uh, John and Natalie. Uh, should be coming from Lynn hopefully this week. All right, what, what we can do is we can, we can make the motion with the, with the exact term pending and we can, uh, we, we can mention the term at the next legislative session in March. Sound good, Mr. Wills? Yeah, I, ideally, yeah, they should be staggered terms so that each year, municipal year, Sure. Oh, yeah, we have a list. The, uh, yeah. the term would be up and there would be a vacancy so that uh, we don't yeah. have multiple terms being no, up at the same time. Okay, we, we, can sort that, we, can sort, we can sort that out after the fact and, and do the motion to appoint Mr. Right. Coleman and the rest of, as well. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn does have the list of the different dates and she's putting names into it and getting it to Natalie. Sure. We, and, and we can uh, we can clean it up a little housekeeping at the ne next legislative meeting. So the motion would be to add Jason Coleman to the Brookhaven Borough Rec Board uh, term pending. I'll make a motion. The, who wants the motion? Mrs. Smith, the motion. Who has the second? I'll, I'll second. make a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any so opposed? this. No motion carries. Okay, so this is for a second 
uh, member. This is going to be for Jim LaPere. Same thing. He's going to be a, um, a board member with, again, a specified term when we determine that. So I just, that's the motion. Oh, I, know. I heard that. Who's taking it? I'll, I'll make the motion. Who wants the second? I'll second. I'll, you guys are slow tonight. Come on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No questions. Welcome back, Jim LaPerry. He always did a, a great job in the rec board. He did a good job as rec board president, and he'll bring a lot back to it. So welcome back. Okay, so the third uh, motion is going to be for Charles Allen. He is one of the owners of Bateman's Funeral Home. So we welcome any of our businesses that want to participate in any of our boards. So um, this is for Char Charles <laughs> Allen for, again, <clears throat> unspecified term time um, okay. at a later date. I'll make that motion. Second. One second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. So the fourth motion is for a resident whose name is Justin Howe. He's, um, a, he also has done a lot of coaching with um, the baseball. So mm -hmm. he has a lot of experience from the um, athletic aspect of it. Um, so this would be again to make a motion to add Justin Howe as a rec board member for unspecified term time uh, to be determined at a later time. Who wants the motion? I'll make it. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? Any opposed, I should say. Mm -hmm. Carries, thank you. And I also have one last one for an alternate. And that alternate is um, Vaughn Donaway. So again, it will be for an alternate position to the rec board for unspecified uh, term uh, to be determined at a later time. Ms. Sawicki takes, could you, takes the could motion. You Go ahead. Could you repeat? We could, John, I didn't hear who the person was. She was. It was, it was, Ms., it was Vaughn Donaway. Vaughn I, Donaway. You might know. You might recognize the name. Yeah, I do recognize the name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have an Ed McMahon in the audience. All right, so who wants the motion? I do. Make the motion. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Welcome back, Vaughn. So to continue on with the rec board, um, we did meet on the 28th. There was a few things that were covered. Um, the next event that we would have would be the egg hunt which we are um, looking for creative ways um, to actually have the event and hold it. So we were talking about kind of doing what we did for the trunk or treat and make it more of a drive-through um, and have staggered um, times for when the kids could come to have prepackaged. We talked about not doing the eggs, but having prepackaged bags of, of candy and treats for the children with the Easter bunny there. Um, so as of right now, the Easter egg hunt is scheduled for um, Saturday, April um, 3rd. The time I think on the calendar states 11 a.m., but that may change after we kind of put it together and talk with the rec board on how we're going to actually logistically do that. But the thought was to kind of mimic how we did the trunk or treat because that was such a huge success and it was COVID friendly. Um, if that's possible. So, well, eternal optimists like myself think we'll be generally out of the pandemic by April. Enough of us will be vaccinated. The numbers keep going down. So we'll, we'll hope. I don't see how you do an egg hunt in that same format, but time will well, tell. It wouldn't necessarily be an egg hunt, but it would be at least them be able to get a treat. All right. Well, hopefully we're out of the pandemic by then. <laughs> I have high hopes. The other thing that we discussed at the rack board and I know that uh, Mr. Catania is going to be discussing it um, on his report was the DCNR grant. Um, we mentioned about possibly doing a multi-purpose um, facility, utilizing an existing um, area that is underutilized right now. So I won't steal his thunder, but the rec board was very much on board with that multi-purpose um, facility. The other thing that we talked about was the baseball and softball have started their online registration. There's only going to be online registration for this year. 
and they're hoping to have a, a season. It's being pushed back, I think, for both of them till towards closer to the end of April. Um, but online registration, they've extended registration. Um, I believe I know that baseball and softball, I don't think has um, increased their registration fee, which was very helpful. We also talked about, we had conducted some field inspections and we had noticed that there were a few infractions on some of the fields. No one knows when those infractions occurred, but they were obviously safety hazards. Um, we had a Mr. Grant submit what those infractions would cost to fix, and it was about a $3,000 cost. So we had talked about making sure that anyone that is going to be volunteering or utilizing those fields that they need to follow the borough ordinances and nothing should be done on those fields without council knowledge and approval. And from, so what I understand, very... from what I understand, that electrical work uh, was done decades ago. No one, no one involved, currently involved, had a hand in it, thankfully. But I think you had things like electrical cords run through conduit and whatnot. Correct. There was Someone a few got fractions. shocked on the pitcher's mound last year or the year before. They didn't have it this year, but um, we'll get it fixed. Correct. So that was, and I know that uh, Mr. Dykes is on. So if I forgot anything, I know that he can obviously uh, fill it in. Um, the only thing else that I have is that um, the police committee, as well as the part of the contract negotiations, we met on January 5th, January 6th. January 20th and January 27th to try and hopefully resolve and um, get a police uh, contract signed as soon as possible. Um, and that is the end of my report. All right, let me add that I did reach out to a company that, that builds uh, deck hockey slash uh, basketball courts with a sport court surface. They're waiting on a call back from me. And uh, after I get a quote, I'll get a couple of quotes. I will present some sort of plan. Mr. Gilroy and I will work on it and we'll submit something to Mr. Catania. I believe you wanted a more uh, robust plan to submit with the grant application, correct, Charles? I'll take that as a yes. That, so was, a yes. that, for you. Okay. <laughs> that was a nod with the mute on. <laughs> and um, again, this is all based on, uh, all hinges on getting a grant. Because for what I think it's going to cost, we don't have that type of money for it. So cross your fingers and we'll do what we can. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Heller. Ms. Sawicki. Thank you. We do have bills to pay tonight. So I am going to make, um, I just want to explain what they are for people who are listening to us tonight. The general fund is $33,501.67. Trash is $600. The sewer is $64,072.13. And there is also the Delcor bill, which I had talked about at the prior meeting, $783,135. We're actually paying um, for 2020. And when you receive your tax bill from the borough, the amount that's under sewer, if you're on a Delcor recipient, that will be what we're collecting this year to be paid next February to um, Delcor. So I'm gonna make a motion that we do approve um, the bills for February. Make the motion. Well, you'll take the second, Janice I'll made second. the motion. Right, All, in All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any questions? I have a question actually. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Janice, uh, I'm just looking on here and I'm seeing the Memorial Park camera was placed. What, what happened to that one? Did, we, did anybody know? The the Mo Memorial Park camera was one of those old type, I guess you'd call them hood cameras that was oh, yeah. probably put in in the 90s and it was barely functional. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we, we discussed, for whatever reason, Memorial yeah. Park was last, but um, Mr. LaPera, yeah. I believe, former councilman LaPera and I started a project to uh, update all the cameras or add where where add cameras in parks where they weren't due to a couple of incidences. And we knew Memorial Park was probably gonna be one of the more tricky ones, so we left it for last, but. Um, 
from what I understand, that is all we have for M2 technologies to do, that we should all be caught up. Oh, that's great. Thank you. No, yeah, it, 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 was, um, it was barely functional. There's also power supply issues amongst other things that Mrs. Heller was talking about, but um, they, uh, they got it fixed. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yep, yep. Janice, you're done, correct? That's, that's all. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Vasquez is excused. Mr. Kipanyu. Oh, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go I ahead. have one more thing that I forgot that the rec board for the rec board. Um, baseball and softball asked council if they'd be willing to purchase the hand sanitizer stands for the kids around the snack bar bars so that when the softball season starts that we would have that available for them. I do not have a cost of what that would be, but I have feeling that it would only be Thank about you. probably six all together right. if we do two at each park. So I didn't know, um, right, I didn't think that there would be an issue with that. Um, no, but I was no. gonna work with Harry to get a cost for us to see what, cause I know that he's been getting a lot of stuff for the barrel. So I wanted to see about getting a quote. I don't, unless anyone in council's uh, uh, opposed, I don't think anyone would be, but you can speak your piece now. That doesn't require a motion. But uh, I, I'm in full support of it, obviously. Well, we, we have an Anyone Eagle else Scout. have any concerns about it? We have an Eagle Scout looking for a project. There you go. Um, but I, I've seen them, you see the ones looked at Lowe's. I mean, they're made out of PVCs and they have a whole yeah. foot pedal thing. They can be yeah. more than, you know, a couple bucks and they're going to be weatherproof too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I mean, looking at that, but it, it, yeah, absolutely. I think we definitely need to have something. Okay. And they could probably be repurposed when we come out of the pandemic. I would imagine. Let's face it, once the once the pandemic status is lifted, no one's going to be using the thing. So we can repurpose them for Borough Hall or the shop or police, wherever we want. So yeah, we'll go back to no, not washing our hands now, you know. Yeah. No, you know, it'll happen. <laughs> All right, Mr. Catania. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my report was submitted for the month. The few things I want to do discuss would be um, under the, my agenda, I see traffic signal maintenance. So each year, the traffic signal maintenance contractor does an inspection of all the traffic signals. And he noted two areas um, that needed to be repaired in short order. The first one was for to repair a, a, a faulty conflict monitor at the intersection of Dutton Mill Road and Edmont Avenue. And the second one was to reset a uh, pedestrian signal at um, Whiteley. And uh, the cost was uh, twelve hundred and ten dollars for the conflict monitor, and about five five hundred dollars to reset the signal. So I would ask for authorization to for that work. Do we have to take a motion? Yes, that would be appropriate. I, I didn't hear. I didn't. I didn't hear the last half of what you said, Charles. You're you're breaking up on mine. I, all right. I apologize. We had we had two items from the traffic signal maintenance inspection that, that needed immediate attention. Mm -hmm. And the first one was, it was a faulty conflict monitor. I heard, I heard, I heard Dutton and Mill and Edgemont and then I, then you And that was, that was $1,210. And then there was a um, pedestrian signal head at Edgemont and Whiteley that needed to be repositioned at about $500 for that. Mm -hmm. for that. Okay, who wants the motion? That's in the quote. I'll take the motion. Second, anyone? The top of it. Anyone want the second? I'll, I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? It's for one thing. Yeah, that's it. Janice is muted. No. Motion carries. Right, the other thing on my on my report was yeah, the Whiteley Road the Whiteley Road culvert. Um, we were aware that 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 had failed over the uh, storm during last year, and we put steel plates on it, and uh, we were hoping to use some. Of that uh, Mariner East grant money to do it, but that that doesn't that didn't pan out neither. So it has been budgeted. And I'm going to ask for authorization to to begin the, the process to get that project uh, for bid ready for bid. Sure, we have no choice. Who wants the motion? I'll make the motion. Who wants the second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. questions? Any opposed? I'll find out. Motion carries. And finally, Councillor Heller had mentioned that uh, about a DCNR grant, and uh, you, Sherry, anytime you want, you can take these things as, as the lead. I don't need to mention them, 
but uh, there's a grant application for recreation from the state uh, open right now. That's, I think it closes in April. Um, I think what I suggested was that uh, after the Parks Committee or the Council comes up with a couple ideas for some gr grant applications, I would set up a meeting with the, the local regional uh, DCNR advisor to come to come to the borough and go over the project with us to kind of give us some pointers as to which would, would score the highest. This is truly a competitive uh, grant program, so we want to try to get as many points as we can. So I'm going to ask her to come out, and I understand we're going to try to set that up for, for a time that um, maybe after hours. I don't know if that'll work, but we will ask that question. I'll start the communication going uh, tomorrow with the um, with the company that I contacted, and I'll have Mrs. Heller and Mr. Gilroy join a little a little committee to get this going. Okay. Call them back, get them out for a quote, and then we will get back to you. I'll get this done as soon as possible. Ch um, okay. Charles, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Is it that we just have to pick one or can we have, you know, can we have like top three things that we want to do and see which ones they, you know, hot, like score the highest or is it just one project that we can put in and keep our fingers crossed? I, I think for, for the, the initial meeting with the, with the DCNR rep, I think I would go with any ideas that you have. We I mean, okay. can sit down and talk to her. I mean, there's even a possibility of, of combining, like doing a park improvement project that may, may involve two different sites. Um, I think the, the grant max, I believe, is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So you know, and keep in mind that that's a fifty percent match of this project. So every every dollar they give you, you have to spend that amount. So, but just come up some ideas. Where we get the money from, people? That's a hundred hundred twenty five thousand. We'd have to come up with. No, no, we, we didn't. The match is two fifty. We didn't say we were going to spend that. We said the match. Yeah. We said the match was two fifty. We're two different and parks. This, I mean, and this this grant. We don't have this, any money, people. This grant. This grant. Um, talk about it. relax a minute, Janice. Go ahead. Grant, you have you have several years to implement the project, so it, it's yeah, not received. Right. Come with the money tomorrow. It's so. So this is a so this grant, we have to submit mm -hmm. it by April. So the deadline is by April, correct? Right. Right, and you'll you hear about it in the fall, usually in the fall of this year, and then I believe you have three years to implement the project. You have three years, so it's a yes. three-year. Okay. Yep. So, so you can plan for it if needed. Yeah, no one said we're breaking the bank on this. We're we're just looking to improve quality of life and give something uh, additional for another couple of additional sports for our, our children to play or kids to play. So that's all. That's all I have. Mm. You may be raising taxes. Don't go start yeah, with well, raising taxes nonsense. Well, you're going to have to if you're going to put that in. The public doesn't need to hear that nonsense. We're not raising taxes. Don't talk about big. Big recreational projects. Thank you, Mom. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, that's my job to do this. And, and we love you. You do a great job. But we're not we're not talking about raising taxes here. Don't use those bad words in my name. Um, who's who's up next, Mr. Leslie, sir? Mr. Leslie. Okay. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, the Verizon Building that's uh, completely vacant now. It's empty. They were in there last week. They cleaned out the rest of their. Uh, Computer equipment. Do we have a potential uh, tenant? Not that I know of yet. All right. Uh, 4117 Edgemont Avenue, that sold. The landowner sold that to the two guys that own that place, or now they're the owners of that place. That's the Beer Barn. Uh, 4401 Edgemont Avenue, I was there last Friday, we met with the state. That's the SNS building. That second floor is now going to be rented out section eight. The state was there the other day for the inspection. Along the, apart with the, the apartment above it? Correct. Okay. Uh, and did you say the beer barn sold? No. The property owner sold the building to the two guys that own it. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. What is it? Connick down there, I believe. He owns that property. Yep. Mm -hmm. he, the people that now own the building. Sold it to, the, to, the, to their tenants. Correct. Great. Uh, we had a, uh, we didn't have it. Hilltop had a water main break and no one knew about it. They didn't notify myself or the chief or the fire department. We found about it late at night. I emailed the girl at four o'clock in the morning the next morning. They kind of had an attitude towards me uh, that they said we were notified. The fire company wasn't notified. I was not notified. So we believe we got that straightened out on notifications of the fire department and myself now. Anytime they shut that water off in that complex, we need to be notified. 
Uh, I reached out to uh, 4236 Edgebone Avenue. It's still in the preliminary stages with the attorneys, with the TD Bank and that Morgan. Uh, they're going to buy that property and she's going to let the fire company train in there before they tear it down. And uh, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Everybody Thank have a nice evening. Thank you, sir. I have, I Go have ahead. Two things. I have two things for Mr. Leslie. Sir, I have yes. a question. So I noticed that when, since the Verizon building has been vacant, the parking lot to the right of it, the um, pedestrian lights or the, the, the parking lights are off, which kind of creates it to be a little bit dark. And I guess this is, could be for Chief Leslie too. Who do we need to contact to see if they can leave those lights on? Because it is a safety hazard. Um, is that the, uh, I guess the property owner or? I can reach out to Bridget O'Hallahan tomorrow. I could send her an email and ask her about it. Okay, She's the property uh, maintenance girl up there. Uh, okay. And I'll there's... send her an email and ask her about those lights. Only because it's also very close to the bank and I feel that it needs to be a little bit more well lit because I think there's four lights that are out. And I, I understand that they probably did because Verizon is technically considered closed, but they also have to be mindful that people do park there um, and that there are some safety concerns there. Um, and the second thing I have is that um, Lowe's will be doing their corral very soon. Well, probably by the end of this month. And they're gonna probably reach out to you to come out and check to make sure that they're in compliance so that the trucks can get through. Um, I just wanted to give you that heads the up. The garden corral? Yeah, that garden corral. I see. Okay. Hey, I'll reach out to Todd and tell him to hit me up when uh, they're ready for a little inspection up there. You got it, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. I already gave my brief board of health report. The zoning officer is not present tonight. I believe he had his council meeting. That brings us to the second public discussion. Is there anyone for public discussion? Of course. Please unmute yourself. Mr. Dykes. Hi there. Name and address. Tom Dykes, 305 West Brookhaven Road. Good evening. Uh, good evening. We'd like to thank council for uh, approving our four new members to the rec board. Uh, I've given them a charge that what I would love to see is not only the current programs we have, but for them to come up with some other new programs and new ideas um, to include things for our preteens, our teens, young adults, and going through adults. So try and do a little bit more programming for everybody, not just the, the younger children and the seniors. Try and build it all up. And they're already, they were already coming up with ideas on Thursday night. It was great. Did, did, did you hear that, Cherry? You, you and uh, Donna heard them come up with ideas already that night, correct? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. it was very yep. lovely to see. They, it was, ideas were just flowing. It was really nice to see. Um, the other thing, I think the drive-through uh, Easter program, I think will be a good one for that. We are looking into some of our uh, other programs, hopefully getting the summer concerts up again this year. So we're looking at that. Um, and then on a personal note, just for our snow removal, I don't know who at the borough lit the fire under the state, but the state was unbelievable on Brookhaven Road this last storm. They had the center of the road down to down to McAdam all the whole time. It was crazy. I mean, they were probably at least 10 or 12 passes every day, Monday and Tuesday. Um, it was just crazy. I've never seen the state do that much work on Brookhaven Road. So whoever got lit a fire under them, thank you very much. Because that's a big safety issue, as everybody knows. <laughs> and that's it. Let me add, Tom, while you're on. Um, I'm told that the count or the council, sure, the um, rec board term is five years. I thought it was five years. So, as I, 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 it might be five. I I thought we were on fours. Don't doubt me, Dykes. And Mr. Gavin has signed on. Bill, do you have a report, sir? Yeah, I do. How you doing, Terry? How are you, buddy? Sorry, you, buddy? sorry. Yeah, I just got the got the links in over to me. Um, I had uh, four zoning reviews this month. I just got the the review for the Brookhaven storage. Um, I just received that just on just Monday. Um, I had four four reviews, and all four were approved.
Anything else? No, everything's good, man. How's everything with you? <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> well, welcome aboard again. Yeah, thank you. We're used to longer zoning reports over the last 40 years. Uh, <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there anyone else for public discussion? Yes. Please. If so, please unmute yourself, state your name and address. Maureen Bale, B A I L, 3512 Williamson Avenue, Brookhaven. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure because I tried Google Meets first and I wasn't registering. So I just wanted to make sure. Yep. In January, I had some questions on the field development, and the borough was kind enough to share the plan so I could see where the landscaping was going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed there's a dumpster in the buffer zone behind our house and um, the way I read the zoning if I'm reading it correctly is that buffer zone should only be trees and shrubs and um, that dumpster is within the 20 feet that's supposed to be in that section. Are you talking about the Brookhaven Glen development? Yes. Okay, the so you want behind Taco Bell and Wendy's. So you want the dumpster position within compliance, correct? Correct. Okay. Right now, yeah. the plans show it in the buffer zone, and um, all the other dumpsters look like they're away from the buffer zone. Like there's two along the residences of Williamson Avenue. The other one is near their dog park, and it's out of the 20 feet. Ours is right in the middle within 20 feet of my neighbor and us okay we can take care of it for you we'll reach okay. out tomorrow. And if, i appreciate that and who can i speak with if i have any concerns on the field um especially when they get close to us the reason being is that i understand um i was getting a little paranoid when they started digging because they were getting really close I left a few messages at the borough, but I didn't hear back from anybody. So I finally went over and I talked to the foreman on the job and he was nice. I expressed my concerns to him. When they made the corner, it looks like they made the corner. And I told him this, it looks like you made the corner at 20 feet, but then you cut in as you were going down along the fence. Um, he explained that that pile of dirt is part of what they're making what they call the berm where the trees are going to go on top of mm -hmm. i get i get that but if i have any issues while they're doing that while they're doing it and he's not available he was very helpful um who do i talk to you can call the front office and talk to the office manager john wilbert or you can email me directly my my email's on the hyperlink on the uh, website all right. And we will get back. And Okay. And you will talk to Sheridan or whoever's available or South Cone regarding the dumpster? Yes, we will. We'll take care of that as soon as possible. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. That was Any, it. Anything else, Mrs. Bell? Uh, nope. All right. Thank you. We'll take care of it. If we don't, send us an email or call Mr. Wilbert. Yell at us. Is there anyone else for public discussion? I just like to comment real quickly and thank our public works department for a job well done with the snow plowing. Fantastic. Anyone else for public discussion? Going once, going twice. Public discussion is closed. I neglected to congratulate Jimmy Kelso for his hire as a uh, part-time police officer. And um, I'd also like to reiterate what everyone else said and wish Officer Kyler all the best in the future. And I thank him for his service to the Brookhaven Police Department. Best wishes in all that you do, sir. And that is all I have. Is there anything else from council or any of our elected officials, appointed officials? All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening, all. Thank you.